In today's video, we're gonna talk about Bangkok. So if you're planning a trip to go there, if you wanna know about currency, transportation, things to do, nightlife, and most importantly, you wanna know about how much money should you bring or how many days should you stay. So those are gonna be the topics for this video. And I know probably this video is gonna be a little bit long, but I promise you it's gonna be well worth it. So make sure to watch the video all the way to the end. And without further ado, let's dive into the video. Hey, what is going on YouTube family and welcome back to a new video. My name is Antonio Llanos. I want to start this video saying that this video is going to be part of a playlist because there's going to be so many things to talk about in Thailand, but in this, in this specific video, we're going to concentrate just in Bangkok. Uh, but I actually went to different places like Koh Phi Phi, the islands, Chiang Mai, and don't worry, if you don't know these places, I'm sure you're going to know them by the end of this video or by the end of watching all the playlists because there's going to be so many things to do. So make Make sure to go in the description and you're gonna find a link to the other video in case you want to follow the same journey that I took when I was in Thailand so make sure to check in the description below because there's gonna be so many information about how to travel Thailand and I'm sure it's gonna be well worth it and without further ado let's dive into the first topic so the first topic is gonna be language so if your first language is gonna be English if you're planning to travel to Thailand and you might be thinking oh I just gotta learn a new language I have to tell you that you don't have to learn a new language it's gonna be nice of you if you can learn a couple of words like thank you like uh, where can I go but personally speaking we were there for like two weeks and I feel kind of like embarrassed because the only word that we learn how to say is kind of like is say a uh, thank you so if you are someone is born and just speaks English, I feel like you're not gonna have any problem going down there because a lot of people speak English. And if you don't, if you feel like someone cannot, cannot understand you, I'm pretty sure you can do a like sign languages and they're gonna understand you. But that's what we're, we were doing when we were asking for food, transportation. We were just communicating by signs and I feel like it was pretty, pretty good. Like it actually worked. <laughs> Science language. So you don't have to be worried about whether you don't speak the language or whether you, uh, you want, if you actually want to learn the language, it's actually even better. So it's completely up to you. So now let's jump into the second topic. Okay, guys, so I have to make this video because I forgot to cover about the visa part of going when going to Thailand. And I have to say, uh, I'm residing right now in the United States. So when I went there, I didn't have any trouble. Uh, actually, actually, I didn't need, even need to get like a visa or anything like that. But on the other hand, I met some people in there in Thailand that were from other countries countries like Europe uh, also South America and they told me that they did have to get a visa so you got to double check if you live in a different country other than the United States in terms of if you need a visa or not so you make sure to double check that and just to kind of like uh, confirm everything uh, I didn't have any trouble going there so make sure to double check if you're gonna need a visa like that so let's jump into the next topic so now let's talk about the season. So it all depends of what are you trying to get out of your vacation. So those are gonna be different type of seasons. You're gonna get the rainy season, the cold season, the hot season. So the rainy seasons are gonna be between May and October. So if you like those rainy days that you wanna go there on vacation, personally, I don't like them, but if you like them, those are gonna be the months that you're gonna be looking into travel to Bangkok or Thailand pretty much. Or if you like the cold season, you can go between November and February, but the cold season in Thailand, it, I would say it can get as low as slow as the 70s. So it's not like really, really cold, but I would say that is a, I personally like those days that like 
it, when you get like a like a temperature between the 70s 80s because it's hot but it's not too hot but if you actually like the hot season you like the bur the sun burning and you can actually go a uh, between march in april so that's the days that we went and i gotta say that it was pretty hot i think like um, the temperature wise it went up to the 110 degrees fahrenheit so it definitely got a i would say that it got really really hot so as you can see i'm a little bit dark right now so and you can barely see any clouds in the sky so those are going to be everything for the seasons and now let's talk about the flights depending of which season that you want to go personally we went into the hot season which is march and april and i have to say that the flights were pretty cheap we actually pay only 642 dollars for a round trip flight from new jersey all the way to bangkok which is more or less i would say like around 20 to 21 hours flight and I have to say that it was pretty, pretty cheap. And actually, I was able to save some money by using uh, this. I don't know if you know this. It's a plugin which is called Ebates, which I'm going to show you in the computer. So you can actually save some money a, a booking your flight in case that you want to use the, this kind of like little hack that I'm going to teach you right now. Let's dive into my computer. So before showing you the hack, I actually want to show you the platform that I use to book most of my tickets and this platform is called JustFly.com. So let's say you're going to fly from New York all the way to Thailand and once you click into the search, you're actually going to be able to find some cheap flights and not only that, the thing that I like the most about this platform is that it's going to gather all the information on the web from all the airlines and it's gonna show you the prices in only one platform from the cheapest to the highest and as you can see you're gonna be able to find different uh, airline tickets if you wanna you can go for the $741 I think it's pretty good comparing that the fact that this flight is around like 21 hours to go there so i think it's pretty good so before uh, showing you so what is ebates and the, and the reason why i want to show you this little hack is because you're gonna be able to get cash back whenever you're gonna buy your ticket so let's say you buy your ticket at 741 dollars you're gonna be able to get up to ten dollars depending of what are gonna be the promotions for that specific date so in this case it, it, as you can see ebates on the side is offering me eight dollars in cash back if i decide to buy any tickets from this platform so in that case instead of paying 741 dollars i'm gonna be paying like a 700 like 32 dollars or something like that around those prices okay for the ones that don't know what is ebay so basically stores pay ebay a commission for sending you their way and ebay shares the commission with you as cashback so why do i like that is because instead of you just paying the full amount you're actually going to be able to save some money by just using this plugin for the ones that don't know what is a plugin so basically it's an extension that you're going to add to your google browser and you're going to be able to see some promotions in here so when you click activate you're going to get eight dollars back once you complete the transaction with justfly.com so when are you going to get that money and the, and these are some of the questions that most people ask uh, you're going to get the money after they verify the 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 purchase maybe after me i would say maybe like one two weeks and the reason why i like this on top of that is because ebates actually is going to send you the money in your paypal account so you have a paypal account you connect it to that you can connect it to your bank and they will send you that money they will not they are not going to send you a gift card because i know a lot of people don't like gift card a check or anything like that they actually will send you they can send you a check if you want to but they're going to send you the digital cash to your paypal account so it's, it's cash that you can buy anything that you want to do and the best thing is that when you're gonna use the link that I'm gonna provide you down in the description below with the comment section, you're gonna get an additional $10 extra. So let's just add these numbers. So in case that you wanna use that, it's basically you're gonna save $18 for booking the same flight. So instead of paying like $741, you're gonna be paying like 720 or so. Like just rounding those numbers a little bit. And let's say you're gonna travel inside of Bangkok to different islands. And you can actually use the same plugin. So you're gonna buy a ticket uh, right here, uh, which is gonna be a round trip to Bangkok. And then if you wanna go to another city inside of, of Thailand, you can actually book it through here. So you're gonna save an additional eight dollars and so on. So that's the reason why I like this is because you save money. At the end of the video, you're gonna check in the description. I'm gonna leave the link so you can apply. And this is completely free. You don't have to pay for anything to actually join this program so instead of leaving money on the table you can actually 
uh, redeem that money into cash back and use it towards something else. Maybe food that you want to get in there, maybe an upcoming trip that you want to get in there. Without further ado, let's go back into the video. Hey guys, so now that you know about language, season, the flights, now let's talk about how safe is Thailand. And I have to say, if you ask me, Anthony, would you rate how safe is Thailand from a one to 10? One being the most dangerous and 10 being the most safe. I have to say that Thailand was like a 9.5 I would say it was pretty, pretty safe. I actually was walking on the streets with all my equipment, like the big camera, my GoPro, selfie stick, and I have to say that nothing ever happened to me. I never got like robbed or anything like that. So I would say Thailand is one of the most safe countries that I ever, ever traveled. Now let's talk about currency. And I feel like these tips are gonna help you and are actually gonna save you a lot of money. So when we went to Thailand, the Thai currency was around $1 is gonna be equals to 30 to bath so bath is gonna be the currency in Thailand and that's something that you should know before going there so you can actually do your own calculations and how much you're gonna get in the currency so what can you buy with 32 bath I would say like around two three bottles of water like each water is gonna cost you around 10 bath depending on the location maybe up to seven bath if you're gonna get like really cheap in different locations in Thailand so that's gonna be some of the currency and then I'm gonna tell you what on one experience in the airport where I lost around like a hundred thirty dollars because I didn't know the conversion of the Thai currency so before leaving New Jersey we actually went to this exchange house or exchange location where you can exchange foreign currency so we went here and we consulted with the with the girl that was in the front desk and we asked how what were the the prices in terms of exchanging money so when we uh, asked the girl and she actually gave us gave us a rate so we wanted to exchange a thousand dollars because we didn't want to get to thailand without money and kind of like struggled there and uh, finding a some type of currency that we can actually pay the tax driver so they can get us to our hotel or anything like that so the lady on the airport uh, gave us the uh the the how much we were gonna get for a thousand dollars so she gave us i would say i don't quite remember right now but i remember that she gave us a number which was twenty eight thousand baht so bath is basically what they use in thailand is the currency that, that they use so and the reason why we decided to exchange there is because when we asked her what were the rates and she just told us that we're gonna she was gonna charge us only ten dollars for the conversion of, of the whole thousand dollars and we thought that that was a really good deal because if you exchange one thousand dollars and you only get in charge ten ten dollars for the conversion that's actually only one percent in conversion rate little little that we didn't know is that in the airport she was she was giving us less than what is actually the equivalent of one dollar to bath so if you go into google and you google what is the equivalent of one dollar into bath and more or less you're gonna get an answer between 20 31 bath up to 32 bath which is pretty good so in, in we, we actually consulted with a girl at the booth and she said that the those numbers are not accurate in google that you're gonna get a lot less than you're gonna than you than than you're gonna see in the app if you decide to exchange the money so in in exchange in, in actually yes it was a little bit less than that but I, we didn't think that it was gonna be too that much so when we exchanged a thousand dollars we got a twenty eight thousand bath from the lady and like i told you before she charged us ten dollars for the conversion so we thought that that was going to be the conversion and that we weren't going to get a better rate in the country so we decided to exchange the thousand dollars and when we actually got to the country we we saw the exchange rates and it was a it was the same exchange rates that you could have gotten in google so in google it was 31 point something and when you go to bangkok if you decide to exchange a thousand dollars you will get 31,000 baht or 32,000 baht depending on what is the value of the of, of the of the dollar at that moment so i would say my strongest tip is that don't exchange any money in the airport because we lost 
a total of $180 by just exchanging our money into the airport. Make sure if you're gonna change the money, you can exchange the money at the airport in Bangkok so you can have a little bit of money so you can drive around, so you can have a cab. You can actually negotiate with taxi drivers because you don't wanna have no money and in, while you're gonna be in Thailand. So once you actually get the money from the airport, you can actually go to your hotel and then you can find local places around the area that you're gonna be able to exchange money at a much better a, exchange rate that you can get in the airport in Bangkok or in the airport in the United States. So those are going to be some tips in the currency. And I feel like that's going to save you a lot of money. And another tip that I can give you is that, so I was personally using this card when I was a, when I was there. And this one is going to be the, the Sapphire Preferred. And the reason why I like this one is because a, in case that you a, feel like you're not going to have enough cash, a, to exchange no more and you want to save the cash maybe for something else you can actually use this credit card and you're not going to get a charge any transaction fee and that's the reason why we use this one because even though a, let's say you're going to use different credit cards in case that you want to use maybe another bank or anything like that a, the reason why i like this one is because it actually saves a lot of money and the, and the other day i was tracking what is the transaction fees like and it can vary between one or two dollars for transaction fee for any purchase that you're gonna make in there. So with these, you're actually gonna save more money if you can decide to use a credit card, which is kind of like this one, the Sapphire Preferred. And if you're gonna apply for this credit card, I'm gonna leave a link in the description. It's a really good credit card. You get some really good sign up bonus points. I'm not gonna get into much detail into this, but it's definitely a good credit card. So make sure to get it because it's gonna save you a lot of money in case that you feel that you are short of cash and you need to save some cash because maybe you don't have access to any other source of cash so that's gonna save you some some of the money and that you can start using to keep traveling in bangkok okay so where to stay that's gonna be a really good question as you can see right now in the map you can see bangkok and i'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see the best section that you can stay on i personally stay right here on the shanghai mansion bangkok i'm gonna show you a little bit about more of the hotel how it looked like and the things that i like the most about the hotel and the reason why i will definitely stay another time when i go back to bangkok in the same hotel and this place is actually close to everything so as you can see on the left side of my computer you can see all the things to do all the museums all the palaces and as well if you go on the nighttime you're gonna be able to find a lot of things to do in the nighttime in terms of going dancing going out with your friends to have some drinks and don't worry I'm gonna cover more of that later on because there's gonna be so many things to talk about so like I was saying before so I stay in this section in the platform that I used to stay here was booking.com and don't worry I'm gonna leave all the links in the description so you can have more access to the specific location and the address where I stay and the reason why I like this hotel because it was decently cheap it wasn't that expensive as you can see $228 for four nights you that's gonna be basically for two adults and if you, if you divide the price by four it's basically you're paying every single day like around 50 like 50 dollars a day and i think that was pretty good so once we left the airport and we decided to go here and the first impression about this hotel it was it was amazing like the entrance looked pretty spectacular the customer service is amazing they actually welcome us with some drinks traditional drinks from bangkok i cannot tell you the name of it from the top of my head but it was pretty pretty amazing so once getting to the room is a complete experience it looks really like old school for the ones that were kind of like uh, worried about the chargers as you can see this one has a universal type of charger so if you bring so if you're gonna bring your iphone with with you and you, and you need a plug let's say i'm just gonna give you an example so you need the camera and you have this type of plug right there so it's pretty easy you just connect it and then you can start charging that so I was afraid about that. So it turns out we didn't have to buy uh, an extra kind of like adapter so we can connect this, these type of devices. And the thing that I like more about this hotel is that the history, this hotel was built on the 1800s and everything that you're gonna find in here 
it looks pretty spectacular when you go to the room you're gonna find like the beds made like an old school asian style so i love it and i cannot like wait for you to actually stay here i definitely recommend you like i said and you can find all the information about this hotel in the description in case that you want to stay in the same place so now let's move into the next section i feel like this next topic is gonna be a great help for you because transportation is one of the biggest things that you're gonna need while you're gonna be there in Thailand. Whether you wanna go to Bangkok or any other city that you wanna go, transportation is gonna be key. And one of the biggest, biggest tips that I can give you in terms of transportation is whenever you're gonna arrive to Bangkok, eh, try to get a SIM card from that country. Eh, the reason for me saying this is because you're gonna be able to use Google Maps in there and that's gonna save you a lot of money. I'm gonna show you how to eh, later on, but hear me out on this, make sure to get a SIM card. And you can actually get a SIM card at the airport for as little as $20. So $20 for like around 16 to 18 gigabytes of internet, which I think is awesome and it's pretty safe. And before doing that, I will strongly recommend you to a uh, consult with your cell phone carrier that you can actually unlock your phone because if maybe I don't know which is gonna be your cell phone carrier. Let's say a uh, let's say it's gonna be Verizon, Sprint, or AT&T, and you bought the cell phone with them. So some of the phones are gonna be uh, are gonna be locked. So you need to call them in advance and maybe a week in advance to tell them that you're going to be traveling to a different country and if they can please unlock the phone so you can use it in a different country. And most of, most of the times they're going to tell you that you can use their phone into into their into Bangkok or Thailand, whatever you're going to be traveling, that they're going to give you like two gigabytes of internet for free. But I have to say that two gigabytes of internet is not going to be enough and more, more, most likely they're going to charge you a lot more after you overpass that the limit of two gigabytes and I have to tell you I have to tell you because of my personal experience when I went to Ecuador uh, they gave me two gigabytes of internet for free and I actually went over that two gigabytes of internet and they ended up charging me like a, an extra hundred dollars into my my phone bill so I don't think that's pretty cool and I feel like this tip is gonna save you a lot of money in terms of traveling uh, traveling inside of Bangkok and actually uh, getting a uh, cars so you don't get ripped off by the drivers giving you like this ridiculous price that you have to pay okay so now let's dive a little bit deeper into transportation so now that you are gonna get your sim card so you can actually travel around in in thailand one of the biggest tips is gonna be at try to memorize how long it takes you from one place to another place and what i mean by that so let me give you an example so when we arrived to bangkok right uh, we arrived there like around 11 12 a.m almost the next day pretty much the next day and we knew that you know, I saw a lot of videos on YouTube saying that you might get ripped off if you don't know how much are gonna be the prices because they might take you to a different destination, kind of like going around and they, they might charge you an extra $20, $30 just for that. So that's the reason I'm telling you to get your SIM card because in that case, you can actually just type the address where you're gonna go. In this example, I was going from the airport of Thailand all the way to my location, which was more or less in Chinatown, which if you calculate the amount of time that was gonna take us to go there, is a, it was around 29, 25 minutes to 30 minutes. And then you can do the translation into how much are you willing to pay. So in this case, I knew that going from Bangkok all the way to our destination was gonna cost us between $10 up to $20 because it's a 30 minute drive. I talked to a lot of people there in Thailand. I wanted to get their experiences into how was their experience on Bangkok. And a lot of them told me that they, most of them got ripped off in the first day or two because they didn't know how much they were going to pay to go from one location to another location. And that's the reason why I told you to make sure to get a SIM card because that's going to save you a lot of a lot of time because you can calculate how much money are you will, are you going to be willing uh, to pay. And just to elaborate a little bit more into what they say. So basically they say that when they arrived to the airport, they took them to a different destination like kind of like kind of like going around in circles so they can charge them a lot more money than they expected to so in the same ride that that i took from from the airport to chinatown which was a 20 to 20 20 to 30 minute drive drive i got charged 400 baht 
which is equivalent to like around twelve fifteen dollars us dollars and i think it wasn't that much and actually uh, some of those people that i was talking to they actually got charged like double of the price so make sure to uh negotiate first of the first first things first make sure you know how long it's going to take you to from one destination to the other destination and the reason why i'm repeating myself is because i feel like these these tips are going to save you a lot of money and believe me this is going to save you a lot of a lot of money and once you finish and once you already go to your hotel now you left your luggage i want to talk about a uh, different ways that you can move around in thailand besides going from the airport to your hotel i want to talk about like what other methods of transportation can you use inside of thailand to actually go around and i felt like the the, the best thing that we did is was just getting tuk tuk drives from one location to the next location i have to say that it was pretty pretty cheap and you can actually also get like subway rides but i feel like it is is one of the other because if you are gonna get a taxi or to the drive they're gonna tell you a price and most likely they're not gonna wait for anyone else it's gonna be you or your friend they're gonna go to another location when you're thinking about going to the subway or kind of like going to like public transportation uh, you're gonna be delayed so you're gonna lose a lot of time waiting for the train waiting for someone that's gonna pick you up so i feel like uh that's gonna be kind of like a uh some of the reasons why i didn't take the train uh, but the some of the transportation methods like i mentioned before was the tuk-tuk taxis there's gonna be a lot of them you can use a uh, the subway transportation and those are gonna be some of the ways that you can travel around and as well as just walking so a uh, tuk-tuk drives can vary in prices and i would say that if you want to save some money so you don't get ripped off when you're going to be asking for prices to go to a temple or whether you want to go to to out of the out of the city to another place is that make sure to use google maps google maps is going to give you an estimated time of arrival and make sure to kind of like negotiate depending of how long it's going to take you to that location so i feel like that's going to be everything for transportation and if you took these steps i'm pretty sure it's going to save you a lot of money and some of the things that i feel like inside of transportation that we can talk about some of the things that i actually was amazed at is that the fact that when you're gonna go there you're not gonna hear a lot of honking like a lot of people is screaming in the in the street saying that you should move fast you should like go to the like you know like kind of like having anger issues on the roads and the reason why i'm talking like that is because i'm really amazed at that because when i was when i'm here i'm living in new york right now i'm, I'm recording this video in new york and when we came back it was kind of like a different environment everyone was honking it was so noisy it's a completely different environment there it also you're not gonna find a lot of traffic lights and when you do find them sometimes you need to cross by by yourself because uh, you need to stop the traffic in the middle of the road so you can actually go because some of the traffic lights actually don't don't work so you need to literally go in the roads or uh, you need you literally need to st stop the traffic in order to uh, make them stop so uh, and also i felt like they were pretty organized even though they're way they weren't a lot of a uh, traffic lights so i was really really surprised by that and i never seen that in another country so i think uh, that those are going to be some of the things that impressed me the most about bangkok not only bangkok i would say thailand as a whole okay guys so now let's talk about the things to do in thailand so this section is going to be really uh, one of my favorites because there's going to be a lot of things to do in thailand but before actually diving into things to do i actually want to talk a little bit more about the etiquette in thailand so uh, and i feel like the one of the biggest things is going to be about uh, whenever you're gonna walk into other people's home is that you need to take off their, your shoes so if if they require you to say please take off your shoes make sure to do that because that's gonna be cultural respect they might not say anything because they know you're gonna be a tourist but pretty much come on like you're gonna go to a different country you're gonna experience their culture it's not your culture it's not your country so make sure to uh kind of like uh, uh follow these rules because it says a lot about you so that's going to be one that i can tell you the second one is going to be whenever you're going to go to temples i'm pretty sure you see this you saw these in a lot of youtube videos is that you need to cover yourself so you cannot be wearing like shorts first of all you cannot like uh, be wearing kind of like uh, a 
a uncover back a t-shirts so you gotta be you gotta dress properly if in case you want to go to temples in case you want to go to kind of like sacred environments so that's gonna be some of the topics and some of the things that you should uh, take in account whenever you go there some of the things i can also uh, kind of like show you because something that i was learning right there is kind of like the way that you're gonna say thank you whenever you're gonna greet someone so different ways to say a hello and hi like thank you uh, so the first one is gonna be if you're gonna be if you're gonna greet the monk or kind of like high high authorities so make sure you're gonna have your hand right here and then uh, you kind of like just gonna bend over a little bit so you're gonna go and make sure you your your thumbs are actually gonna go in like in the middle of your eyebrows so not like this not like this but you're gonna hold it like this and then you're gonna go like this and the second way that you can greet as someone is going to be uh, a, actually if they're going to be your parents, you have some type of respect for them, a, your grandparents, your teachers or anything about you, you kind of like going to say hi to them or thank you a, to them like this just by pointing your nose keep in mind i'm not an expert at this but i'm pretty sure like these little things are actually gonna help you a lot to just show how you respect their culture because you are at least trying it you know you know what i mean so the next one is gonna be if you're saying hi to a friend a someone that is kind of like at your same level like you and then you're just gonna go from your thumbs they're gonna they're gonna touch your your chin so pretty much it's gonna go like this so you'll go like this and then like this and I feel like those are going to be some big tips that you can actually take away from this video uh, because that's pretty much it. Uh, and also, uh, before I dive a little bit more into like the nightlife and the things to do, I have to say that some of the things that I was actually shocked of, uh, about is that in Thailand, uh, most like I haven't seen anyone kind of like using any type of illicit substances, if you know what I mean, like the green things. A, any type of those those activities are prohibited in there so they are frowned upon so whenever you're gonna go there try to stop doing these things just for a little bit while you're gonna be in their country so and also uh some of the things that actually was a little bit shock uh, i'm gonna talk a little bit more about this in the nightlife is that they have a certain hour that they can actually serve drinks in the clubs in the uh, whatever whenever you're planning to go out with your friends so i'm gonna elaborate a little bit more in the nightlife so stay tuned for that so now let's talk about the things to do in thailand there's gonna be a lot of them so without further ado let's just let's dive into it and starting with the first place that you can go, I strongly recommend you to just walk in the streets of Bangkok. You're going to find a lot of things to do, temples, food. You can see a lot of people, locals on the street. And I feel like this is going to be one of the best experiences and the first experiences that you should try because in the first day that we stay in Bangkok, we just decided to just walk around, see what we can do. And if we were planning to go to a specific destination, we decided to walk towards that instead of just taking a cab or a tuk-tuk. And the second place we decided to go is this called Ko Van Kiesel. So for the ones that don't know what is this, it's gonna be a bike tour agency. And the reason why I wanna recommend this is because not only the customer service was good, but the experience as a whole, it was incredible. Instead of you just taking taxis, buses, and actually taking a long time, uh, the reason why I like this a lot, a lot more than those type of tours is because you have the chance to actually go inside of the city of Bangkok and experience the people inside of that so you're gonna have a chance to not only go on bicycle but the basically the tour consisted of bicycle riding tour uh boat riding and you can actually interact with the locals you're gonna eat some traditional fruits from here and you're gonna get a whole experience of what is bangkok this tour at uh, the price for this was only 67 dollars for what i remember 60 dollars per person and it was an eight dollar eight hour tour so it consisted of, of a lot of things some of the things that i really like about this is that you're gonna have a chance to experience the scenery uh, among, along the way you can see temples you can see different streets you can see houses of the locals and i have to say that for the price that we pay it was incredible not only that like i told you before they were pretty friendly 
and they were really knowledgeable in the subject when they were trying to explain us about the history of a specific location or monument and along the way we're actually gonna make several stops to actually eat drink or even like immerse ourselves into the history of bangkok like i said their english is pretty good so you're gonna be able to understand whatever they are saying and although i have to say that it was pretty hot the experience overall was incredible and then after a couple of hours of riding bike then you can go to the yuppie main river walk so what is this is basically a dock that people use for as a way of transportation so if you decide to transfer from one part of the city of bangkok to another part of the city i'm sure this is going to be one of the methods of transportation that you can use as well and in the bike tour this is something that was included so uh, i thought it was pretty cool we definitely had a good time and especially if you want to come here and you want to live here maybe for like a couple of months and weeks this is going to be one of the cheapest ways of transportation that you can have the price for this is only like 10 baht which is like 25 cents to 50 cents and then after that we continue with our sightseeing of the city of bangkok and it was pretty cool and i also wanted to touch upon a uh, some of the common things that you might be able to experience here or some of the questions that you might have and some of the questions that ad have is why is there so many temples in here and for what i was able to research is that there in thailand alone you're going to be able to find up to 40,000 temples and 30,000 being in use. And why there is gonna be a lot of them is because it play a, they play a big important role in Thai's culture, not only because they are really uh, cultural and they they do they have a lot of religion in their cultures as well, but because the temples actually help children if they don't have education, they don't have the, the money to actually pay for their education. They help children between the day ages, between six to 12 to actually get free education for up to five years. And then they are free to go in their own will. And they also have the chance to become a monk. So and why these are so important because in the past they also were used as a way of healing and that's basically something that they do if somebody feels sick the first place that they will go is going to be to a temple because it's a way of healing to people in the thai culture also did you know that bangkok's original name is one of the longest in the world it contains around 165 characters and it's pretty long i'm just going to show you uh like kind of like the names on the screen so you can see them and and for the ones that don't know, like Bangkok means city of angels and it actually has a different meaning or a different name among the Thai people in the community. And then after sightseeing for a while, we decided to go back to the location where our bike tour team was resting and they actually gave us to try some of the fruits that were really traditional from Thailand. So take a look at this. This is Bangkok's thing. Yeah, open it. So, bleed it off. Mm. And then you eat the inside? Hapuka. Hapuka. Yeah. Hapuka. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. What's mm. Delicious. After getting some more drinks, then the agency took us to a different destination and this destination was really good because we now got a chance to actually eat. And I have to say that the food was pretty, pretty good. And the good thing about this is that you're gonna be able to eat as much as you want because they're gonna refill your plates as many times as you want. So I have to say that was pretty cool. And like moving on to the next location, then they jump us into a bus. And I have to say that was pretty cool because by this time we were already tired. We didn't wanna keep paddling all the way over there. So it was pretty cool. They brought us to a different destination. And then the agency took us to kind of like this field full of salt. And I thought that this actually was pretty interesting because of the way that they actually make this happen. So the procedure pretty much goes like this, that they get the water from the sea and then they let, let it rest it overnight. And that's gonna cause basically to the water to dry first of all, and it's gonna leave all the salt on top. And some of the interesting things that I was able to get from this information is that these people actually get paid 700 baht daily that's equivalent to like 25 dollars for the amount of labor that they do and i think it's nothing to the amount of money that they actually get paid but i think this is something really interesting and moving on to our last location for this 
completely back to we went to this wet side spot and where we were able to get a mini boat that took us basically around Bangkok and we had the chance to see all the houses, the culture over there. We saw a lot of buildings along the way and I have to say that the experience overall was amazing. And there's a couple of things that intrigue me about this river. First of all, that there is a lot of fish in there and different animals like lizards. And I asked the tour guide that why do people don't eat the fish and she told me it's because the rivers are pretty contaminated so that's gonna be an advice for you whenever you go there try to not drink this water on the river because it's not healthy for you so just keep that in mind and the next day we went to Wat Pa. This is one of the biggest temples that you're gonna find in Thailand. I would say make sure that you're gonna come here prepared because otherwise they're not gonna let you in if you have your uncovered knees or uncovered back. You can also uh, buy all these things like in the entrance. Make sure to also uh, take an account that the entrance price is only gonna be 200 baht. You're gonna find a lot of history, a lot of things to do. You can always take some awesome pictures in here. And as well, if you wanna support the economy right here, you can always buy in the souvenir stores that you're gonna find inside of the temple. And I have to say that there's gonna be a lot of beautiful things that you can buy. So make sure to take your time between one to three hours that you can spend in these temples. You wanna say the story? Yes, oh. Oh, this one, the, the, the demon king. Okay. The bad, the bad guy. He kidnapping is why the king Lama, is one the good guy. Ap after he won right back, he go to fighting. <laughs> also, did you know that Wat Po is the birthplace of traditional Thai massage? And even prior to the temple's founding, the site was a center of education for traditional Thai medicine. And then you're gonna wonder every time that you go there that you're gonna find a lot of statues showing yoga positions. And that's something that I wonder there because you're gonna see a lot of them in there. Wat Po is the largest and oldest in Bangkok and it's home to more than 1,000 Buddha images, more than any other temple in the country. And some suggestions that I can give you when coming to Wat Po is that try to come a little bit early. I will definitely suggest you to come like between 8 a.m., 9 a.m., 10 a.m. Because what happens is like around midday, you're gonna find a lot of people. You might not be able to see a lot of people as you can see right now in the shot. But at the time that we went, it was kind of like a little bit of the low season because it was really hot. But I'll strongly recommend you to come first thing in the morning and the hours of operation are between 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. And what really amazed me is that in here, you're gonna find what they call the reclining Buddha and it's pretty pretty big it's 46 meters long and 15 meters high its body is fully covered of gold and also you're gonna have a chance to buy some coins at the entrance and you might be wondering why do i need to buy these coins you can put them in these bowls and they say that this is gonna attract you good luck so moving on from this place we decided to go to the grand palace and i have to say that here they're gonna be a little bit more strict so make sure to come dress properly what i mean by that is if you're gonna wear sandals make sure to have socks you cannot be wearing shorts or like an uncovered bags the interest fee for this is gonna be 500 baht which is equivalent to 15 dollars and as well you can have some free tour in english in case that you want to see the hours right now on the screen and i have to say that the hours of operation here are gonna be between 8 30 to 3 30 so, so make sure to come on time because otherwise they're gonna close it the grand palace was built on 1782 and for 150 years it was the home of the king the royal court and the administrative seat of government and i have to say that grand palace is just one piece that you can visit around this area around this the grand palace you're gonna find several buildings that you can take pictures a, like i said it's not only the grand palace that you're gonna be able to find in this location there's gonna be several astonishing temples that you can take pictures of i would say the only bad side about this is that you can only take pictures outside of the temples but inside of the temples is prohibited to take pictures or any type of video and inside of there you're gonna find a lot of people praying unluckily i wasn't able to take footage inside of the temples because of respect and i have to say that if you're gonna come here try to have at least one to three hours to spare because it's pretty big and you have to walk a lot between buildings to buildings in order to see all of the places that this 
place had to offer. And after several hours of just walking on their sun, seeing these astonishing views, temples and everything, we were debating whether to keep seeing temples or just go to the hotel to just rest a little bit. But we decided to just keep pushing a little bit more. And I have to say that we don't regret it because we found a lot of things to do. And our next destination was the Golden Mount or widely known as the Wat Sacket. And the entrance price for this is... This is only 50 baht. 50 baht, so let's go. And the hours of operation in this place are from eight to five. And in here, they are not too strict about the dress code. So you don't have to take off your shoes whenever getting to the temple or come with long pants or, or like cover your back or anything like that. The Golden Mount was built on an artificial and man-made hill. And to reach to the top of the Golden Mount, it requires around 318 steps to climb to the hill. And once you try to go to the top, you're gonna find a bunch of bells that Buddhist people used to strike to produce very deep tones. The Watsakir was used to cremate the deceased who were too poor to afford the funeral or cremation. When an epidemic hit Bangkok during the reign of King Rama II, the remains of 10,000 of poor people were brought here to be cremated. And I have to say that this is gonna be by far one of the few places that you're gonna find a lot of monks around the area praying. And also you're gonna have a chance to go to the last floor of this monument, which is gonna be where you're gonna see the stupa. And the stupa is pretty astonishing as you're gonna be able to see right here. And you're gonna have an amazing view all over all over the city of Bangkok and as well that you can just be here chill and I have to say it was pretty beautiful in around four o'clock we decided to go to this destination which is called the ghost tower you're gonna find a lot of people talking about this in youtube that is a place that you should go but there's gonna be a couple of things that you should know before going here okay so i just wanted to make this quick video because many people on youtube are talking about this place which is called the ghost tower so and even though you can actually get in uh, there's gonna be a security guard that can give you access to the to, to the tower but you have to pay around 1,000 baht per person. So uh, he was trying to charge us around that price, which is equivalent to like $32 right now per person. So if you want to pay that amount, it's completely up to you. I personally think it's not even worth it. So right now we're just gonna leave this place. And yeah, so we're gonna go, we're gonna go to the next place to stay tuned. And really close by the ghost tower, you're gonna be able to find the bank crack bazaar. So what is this? Basically, you're gonna find here a lot of replicas like clothing from Supreme, Gucci. So you're gonna be amazed with the things that you're gonna find in here. And you gotta try them out. And also you're gonna find really cheap clothing. I'm talking about like three, four dollars for a piece of t-shirt, shorts, uh, pants. And definitely if you come with your girlfriend, I strongly recommend you to come by here because it's gonna be well worth it because you can get a lot of things for a really affordable price. In the next place I'm gonna show you is, is gonna be different. This is gonna be inside of a mall. This is called the Sea Life Bangkok Ocean World. So why would I recommend you this? This is gonna be an aquarium and this is not like any other aquarium that I visited before. I have to say that this definitely amazed me. The entrance fee for this is gonna be a thousand baht. So that will be like around like 32 to 35 dollars. I personally pay with my credit card because I didn't want to keep spending cash because I knew we already, we still had like a week and a half more to stay in Thailand. Some of the things that you're gonna find in here is gonna be different type of fishes, sharks, a octopus, seahorses. There is gonna be a big variety of things that you can do in here. And I have to say that the experience was pretty amazing. I um, usually don't frequent aquariums because it's not the type of things that I like, but I'm gonna show you why I decided to come here. And this is basically why I decided to come here is because of this beautiful tunnel that you can see and uh, you can take beautiful pictures from here. And basically that's what it told me. When I, when I went to Google and I saw this picture and I was like, I have to try this. And I have to say, I have to tell you that you have to try this. There's gonna be a lot of things that you should do inside of the aquarium. So hey, I will strongly recommend you to be here between one to three hours. Hey, I would say on an average. And you should try to come first thing in the morning or like around like 10, 11, 12, because otherwise they gonna they usually have shows where they're gonna be feeding the, the sharks and so that's pretty cool and they're gonna get into the tanks. Unfortunately, we didn't have that option to see because we arrived there like around 7 p.m., like 6, 7 p.m. So it was pretty 
late by the time we arrive there. And the hours of operations are from 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. So you're gonna have a lot of time to visit Bangkok and then you can actually arrive here in the nighttime if you don't wanna see the, the people feeding the sharks or the people kind of like going into the water. So if that's something that you're not interested in, I'll strongly recommend you to just do the things I showed you at the beginning. So you can actually follow the same trajectory that I did. So it's gonna save you a lot of time because and we were able to visit a bunch of places in just one day. Okay, so now that you know everything about the things to do, so let's talk a, l a little bit more about the nightlife in Thailand. And I feel like, uh, there, I, I actually was doing a little bit of research in if I can find like things to do in the nightlife in Thailand. And surprisingly enough, I wasn't able to, I wasn't able to find a lot of it. But I actually found some really cool places that you should visit them. And uh, remember, I was telling you that I was elaborate, I was gonna elaborate a little bit more in terms of the 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 drinks in the nightlife and how sometimes they're gonna be prohibited after in certain hours and that's what's gonna happen because one of the nights that we went out uh, i was surprised it was on a thursday that they pretty much closed all the bars they can they pretty much uh, they don't serve any drinks whatsoever so it's kind of like illicit to sell drinks after like 12 o'clock and for what i was able to investigate a little bit more is that between monday and thursday uh, they don't if uh, they don't serve any drinks after 12 o'clock and between friday kind of like they go a little bit later than that maybe one or two and then saturday they actually go up to 3 a.m in the morning but they follow a certain schedule it's not like you're gonna get those drinks anytime that you want it's pretty much they're gonna have up to a certain hours so that's something really interesting and i found about that so now let's talk about the things that you can do in the nightlife so let's dive into it one of the first places that we wanted to visit was the Sky Bar. Unfortunately, we couldn't visit it because they didn't let us in because of our dress code. And in order to come here, you come, you have to come a little bit sharp, dress properly. That's the tip that I can give you. And the second place that you can actually start visiting, if you decided to stay in our hotel, I strongly recommend you to just stay there because they're gonna have live bands. You can actually listen to live music, have some drinks in there. So if you stay in the Magic Hotel, make sure to stay there. However, if you decide to to just go around you want to explore different areas there's gonna be several ones and I usually don't like to promote the places like this soy cowboy but I have to say that it was pretty interesting regardless we didn't know that this place actually was meant for adults and however you can actually have a good time with your friends with your loved ones because they have live bands you can have some drinks so I have to say that it was a really really good time <laughs> Then in the next place that we wanted to go was the Havana Social, but however, we actually found out that this is a hot spot for like nightclubs, like party as a general, like for nightlife. So if you're gonna come to the Havana Social, which is gonna be the place I'm gonna show you in a minute, you're actually gonna be able to find a bunch of bars around this area. So this street is gonna be full of bars, discotheques, you can come with your friends. And if you're gonna come here, you can might as well experience all the bars. And so now let's talk about the Havana Social, why I decided to come here. First of all, it's hidden. And this is kind of like a speakeasy bar that you're barely gonna be able to find it and then the whole concept is that you gotta call over the phone in order to get access to this place and once you get to the second floor I have to say that it is amazing it's beautiful the things that you're gonna find in here the theme overall is kind of like very Cuban and you might be wondering like why would you even go to a place like this in Thailand and I have to say it's because I love Cuban places I love places that play salsa music. So that was our reasoning for coming to this place. We don't regret it because we were able to find a lot of information in terms of where to go out dancing, where to go out to parties, and the drinks and everything was pretty good. You're actually gonna be able to get some Cuban cigars in case that you wanna do it. I don't recommend it, but we had a good time. And also I have to say that the recreation, it was pretty amazing. It was kind of like old casa. Casa means old house. And once you actually get to the bathrooms, it has an old theme as well. Uh, and I thought that was really different from the places that I actually visited in my entire life. I haven't seen anything like this before. And I have to say that it might look dirty, but it's pretty clean. For all the drinks that we, we had, it was around like 1,247 baht, which was around like $35, which is a pretty good price for the amount of things that we did in there. Okay guys, so now that you know about uh, the things to do, the nightlife, and I feel like this next section is gonna be really good because we're gonna talk about, about food or maybe some places that you can go out eat to eat. And I have to say that the food in Thailand is 
pretty, pretty, pretty affordable. And obviously it depends what are you planning to go eat. If you're gonna go to a regular restaurant you, where you're gonna find a lot of tourists, most likely the prices are not gonna be different like the ones that you're gonna see in the United States. Maybe you're able to get one meal for like seven, 10, seven or $10, which is pretty much the same that you're gonna get here in the United States. But if you actually plan to go into the street food, you wanna save a little bit of money, you can actually go to street vendors, like little cars on the street that you can go there and you can actually get meals for as low as $1.50, $2 and you actually get some big, big meals that you, whenever you're gonna go to a restaurant, they still serve you these small meals for like seven, ten dollars and when you're gonna go out on the streets, you can actually say, get five times more for the same amount of money. So it all depends. But in this video, I'm gonna show you some of the places that you can go eat or some of the sections that you can actually go to eat. So let's dive into it. And I have to say it again, if you stay in the hotel that I told you where you can stay in the Shanghai Mansion Hotel, you're gonna be able to find a lot of places around this area. So whether you wanna be walking around, you're gonna find a lot of street vendors that are gonna be selling really, really cheap food between like a dollar, like $2, for a lot of food in this case we actually went to this lady and she was really really nice to us and she gave us this beautiful bowl of kind of like a soup of noodle soup with chicken and it was pretty pretty good and <laughs> i have to say that it was really delicious for the price and not only for the price because it was only 40 baht for this entire meal but also because she gave us some free tea which is a plus for whatever we paid i think it was pretty good and the next place on the list is this one i wasn't able to find the exact name because they don't have it but in here you're going to be able to find the address as well so the food in here is amazing i have to say that a uh, the, the, the one of the places i like the most is kind of like this this bowl soup full with pork chops are crispy and juicy you can add some spicy if you want to i have to say that a uh, the for the price that we pay which was, was around like 40 baht for this amount of food that we were getting more than perfect and outside of this location the same place that you're sitting right now you're going to be able to find some little cars where they're going to be selling some desserts in case that you want to try them out they're going to be really cheap you can actually get them for like 15 18 20 baht and there are two tastes amazing so if you want something on the go in case that you want to visit the temples this is the perfect place to come so you have some snacks on the way you can try them on and this next place is called nice sang little food core why i like this place is because it's cheap it's really good food and the one that i like the most is actually is the pork noodle in case they want to try it out here you're going to find a lot of different types of foods they're going to have different vendors in the same location in case they want to try it this place is going to be located literally next to the sky bar in case that you want to go there or maybe i don't know if they're going to open until like really late at night but if you finish uh in the sky bar in case that you went there to have some drinks you can actually come here post party and you can have some amazing food as well and the next place i'm going to show you in the list is going to be a little bit more in the expensive side because uh, they're gonna serve you so little food but actually the the taste was pretty good so this place is gonna be the house by hong kong house in case they want to check it out okay guys so now we're getting almost to the end of the video and i feel like these next two topics are gonna be really essential for you traveling to bangkok uh, so how many days should you stay or how much money should you bring? So those are gonna be some really good topics because it depends what are you trying to do. If you're gonna do the, all the activities that you that I show you in this video, I strongly recommend you to stay in Bangkok between, I would say three to five days, five being the maximum because I feel like by day five, eh, even though you're gonna have a lot of things to do, eh, somehow it becomes a little bit repetitive in my personal opinion so i would say between three to five days how much money should you bring uh, just to for those three to five days in case that you only want to stay in bangkok uh, i will strongly recommend you to kind of like bring between 500 to 700 dollars because maybe you're gonna be spending a hundred dollars daily in tours in kind of like temples like in other things to do food so in case that you want to buy souvenirs so i would say a good hundred dollars is gonna get you 
far, really, really far in Bangkok. A really good hundred dollars daily though, not for like the five days. Unless you actually traveling really budget friendly, you don't want to spend that much money into other things. You just want to live like the regular lifestyle. So I think like a hundred dollars daily is gonna do a lot for you. There's gonna be so many places that you can go outside of Bangkok that I feel like you're not gonna get the full experience from Thailand if you decide to just stay in Bangkok for like maybe two weeks or so. Unless you actually plan to stay there for like two months and you plan to visit different 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 uh, places in Thailand, maybe one week there, one week all, all the way all there. But I'm sure most of you are gonna have between one week to two weeks to actually explore a uh, Thailand. And I'm gonna elaborate more in future videos, but that's pretty much everything for that. So guys, I hope you love the, the travel guide that I prepared for you. And I have to say that I had a lot of fun recording this because the, the Thailand, Bangkok, and all the places that we went, it was pretty beautiful. So if you're gonna follow the same a route that I took in Thailand, make sure to uh, watch the upcoming videos. Uh, under this video, like I told you at the beginning, I'm gonna leave a link to all the videos that I'm gonna be making about Thailand. So in case that you wanna go to the PP Islands, you wanna explore a little bit of the beaches, and uh, you wanna actually uh, see like different beautiful, beautiful places, and uh, make sure to check the playlist because I'm gonna put the link to all these videos. And in these videos, I'm actually gonna show you how I was traveling from 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 Bangkok all the way to the islands because it gets a little bit complicated because the information out there in YouTube that you're gonna be able to find now is pretty broad. They don't actually explain you in detail. So the goal for me to in this in this playlist is to actually save you the most time and make your traveling experience a lot easier whenever you're gonna go to Thailand. So make sure to watch those videos because it's gonna save you a lot of headaches because I spent hours and hours researching in YouTube and Google and TripAdvisor and the, the information was a little bit vague. So I hope that all the information is gonna help you a lot. So I just wanna say thank you so much. If you love the video that I created for you, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel where I'm gonna be creating traveling guides, anything related to traveling that's gonna help you in your traveling experience. So make sure to subscribe and I just wanna say thank you so much and I'll talk to you later, okay? Peace, take care.